In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called integer break. So basically, the question is that we're given an integer n, and we want to break it into some of k positive integers, where k is bigger than or equal to 2. So basically, we're, we're given an integer n, right? Let's say in this case, n is like 2, for example. We want to break it into some of k positive integers. In this case, we want to break into two or more integers that has a sum that's equal to 2, right? So in this case, I can break it into 1 plus 1 right, which they have the sum as equal to n. And in this case, we have two, right, integers here, right. And we can, in this case, let's say if n is equal to three, I can also break it to one plus, uh, in this case, one plus two, right, or I can break it into one plus one plus one, right, or I can break it into like two plus one and so on, right. So in this case, we want to break it into two or more integers that have the sum as equal to n and the and maximum the product of those integers. So in this case, we want to return the maximum product that you can get. So you can see here we have n is equal to two, right? So if n is equal to two, um, in this case, I can only have, you know, in this case, I, I, have, I can break it into two integer value, which is one, right, plus one. So in this case, one plus one, that's the only option that we have. So in this case, we have one times one, right? Well, you can also go with like zero, but in this case, uh, you can see we have zero plus two is also two. But the thing is, you can see two times zero is zero. So there's no way we can be able to get a maximum pro product, right? So in this case, it doesn't really show. But you can also see that we have another example where n is equal to 10, right? So if n is equal to 10, uh, in this case, you can see we can break it into many things, right? You can see we can have like one plus all the way to all the way to 10 ones right in this case we can also have like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 right we could also have like you know 5 plus 5 right so in this case 5 plus 5 in this case is 10 but in this case it uh 5 times 5 is only 25 right it's only 25 and we can also have like 6 times 4 which is 24 we can also have uh 3 times 7 which is 21 right but we can also break it into further more right you can see here we can also instead of taking the six we can also break it down to three right so in this case instead of six times four we can have three times three times four which is 36 right this is three times three which is nine nine times four which is 39 uh, 36 right so in this case you can see we can also break it out into uh more than two in positive integers and we basically can't be able to um, try to get the maximum product, right? So in this case, it's 36. That, that's what we're going to return at the end. So in this case, um, let's take a look at it a bit more on the constraint side. So in this case, constraint is that n is always going to be between 2 to 58, right? Let's take a bit more of examples here. So let's say n is equal to 5. Uh, in this case, what are some examples? So like, what are some of integers that we can break it into. In this case, we can have we have a bit more examples, right? So you can see we have one plus one plus one plus one plus one, which equal to five. And if we were to get a product out of this, it's just gonna be one. And let's say if we do this, in this case, two times two times one is gonna be four, right? And in this case, this is also has a sum that's equal to n. And then let's say if we have two plus three, which is also equal to n, uh, in this case, the product is six, right? And then here is basically four. So you can see out of all those options, we have six, right? But you can see here, we can also even break it down. For example, like let's say if we have a situation like n is equal to 10, right? In this case, you can see we one option is we can have like is six plus four, right? In this case, six plus four is what six times four is 24, right? But the thing is, if this thing or this integer value can even further breaking it down, right? If, if I can break this down to three, uh, double threes, right? In this case, three plus three is six. If those two value has a bigger product for this one right here, then what's going to happen is that we're going to replace that with three times three, right? Instead of six. And same thing for, for four. If I can break it down to two, right? In this case, if two times two is bigger than four, then we can we can just break it in down, right? We can break the integer down in this case. But in this case, four and two times two has the same value, right? So therefore, we don't have to break it down. But here you can see six, three times three 
is nine, nine is bigger than six, so we can replace that with a nine, and then this way we can be able to get a better value, right, bigger value. So in this case, if we were to solve this problem, what we can do is that we can basically try to visit each and every single option, right? We can try to, with all the options that we can get, and let me draw the recursion tree here. So here you can see this is our recursion tree, right? So basically we want to get the maximum product, right? Return the maximum product for n, and n in this case is five. So let's say we want to call this function fn, right? We want to find the maximum product for five for n. In this case, what we can do is we can basically try with op each and every single option, right? So for example, maybe like the first value that we have is one times, right? In this case, one times four, right? One times four or two times three or three times two or four times one, right? But the thing is just like I mentioned before, if the, you know, if this value, right? Let's say if it's four times six, and let's say n is 10, just like the, the previous example that I just provide, if we can be able to break this six to further to three and three, which causes a bigger product than the current value, then we can continue to break it down. But if it doesn't, then we can continue to use this current value, right? So you can see that's basically what we're trying to do here. So you can see here, let's say, we continue to break down four. We want to try to get the maximum product for four. And then we compare is four bigger than the maximum product of four, right? So in this case, you can see we continue to do our DFS, right? In this case, we know that Fn of one, or in this case, if we what's the maximum product for one is basically one, right? So we can, let's say in this case, it's just zero, right? Because there is no way that we can get a, you know, break it into, well, it's basically just going to be one plus zero, right? One times zero is going to be zero. And then we also have like Fn of two, which we already calculated here, it's going to be one, right? So these are all our base cases here. So we know this is one. One is less than two, right? In this case, I cannot, if I break two down, it will, the max product is one. Or if I don't break it down, it's just going to be itself, right? So I can just have this value itself, which is going to be two, right? And then also here, it's just going to be zero. Uh, or one, right? So one or zero. This one is two or one, right? Two or one. In this case, it's just going to be two. So it's going to be two, and this one is also going to be two. So here, what what's going to happen is that fn of three is two. But the thing is, three is bigger than two, right? In this case, if I break three down, it's two. The maximum profit, the maximum product that I can get is two or it's gonna be this current value itself, which is gonna be three, right? So in this case, if it's three, it's better, right? So in the three is bigger, so we have one times three. And then here, what's gonna happen is we have fn of two, fn of two is one, or it's gonna be two itself, right? So in this case, what's gonna happen is gonna be two, two times two is four. And then here, automatically, we know that this is a one, right? Even though this is a zero, if we break one down to zero, if we use one, it's just gonna be one, right? So one times three, two times two, three times one. In this case, the, the best case is already just gonna be four, right? So in this case, what we can do is we're gonna return four, right? And then we're gonna compare. If we break four down, it's gonna be four, right? The maximum product that we can get is four, or we can use four, so which is gonna be four itself, right? So fn of four, is four so maybe we can be, be able to like some kind of like caching or be able to cache this right so in this case but if we don't cache this right the brute force approach is that if we don't cache this it's going to be exponential right but in this case what we can do instead is we can be able to cache this result right cache it into a 2d array in this case like if we want to get a max product profit right the max product for you know if we break three down is we already done it is two but the thing is we can also compare this right in this case if we break three down is two or it's going to be three itself right we know that it's going to be three itself so let me just re rewrite this here it's going to be four and then here is going to be right it's going to be two but two is smaller than three so it's going to be three here right and then same thing here uh because two we already done it is one so one is smaller than two so in this case we have two and then here is just going to be one because one is bigger than zero so out of all those you can see we have four we have six six and four so in this case six is bigger so therefore fn of five right so in this case it, let's say if n is equal to five the output is six okay so this is basically how we solve the problem so let's take a look at how we do this in code so to solve this in code basically what i did here is i create a cache right this is our cache to uh one directional array 
right? We basically want to cache the value, right? So we want to cache the maximum product of each and every single value up to n, right? So you can see this is our top-down approach. We have our DFS function. We pass in n. We want to find the maximum product uh, if we break n down, right? So you can see here if base case is that if n is two, less than two, right? We can just throw return zero, right? Because in this case, um, you know, let's say if we want to break one down, it's going to be zero. Break zero down, it's going to be zero, right? So so on and so forth. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to see if it's already been cached before. If it's uh, if we already cached it, we can return the cache value. If not, we can compute it here. So this is kind of like their like the core. Uh, function right the core feature of this function right so you can see here we have our max product for n so in this case we want to get the maximum product for n right this is n right here so it's zero and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the current max product so the current max product is going to be if we break the current value down which is n minus i right so we're going to go iterate from one to n we break that down to see what, what's the maximum product for this integer value Right, or it's going to be this integer value itself, right? Just like the example that we talked about before, it you know, if six times four, right, is 24, if we can continue to break six down to get a bigger product, then we will use this, right? If we don't, then we're going to use six as the value that we want to get, right? So it's the same, it's the same thing here. So once we get the current max product, we're going to get, we're going to, you know, compare. So for the max product for n is either max product for n or it's going to be current max times i, right? So what we're going to do then is we're going to cache this and return the max product for n. So you can see here, this is basically how we solve this problem using a top-down approach and time complexity is big o of n and space complexity is big o of n as well because we're using recursion stacks. Uh, the reason why we have big o of n, right, because we basically cache the result, we only compute each and every single integer once, right? So this is how we solve it uh, in top-down approach. And now let's take a look at the bottom-up approach. So the bottom approach, you can see here, we have a integer uh, cache array with the size of n plus one, right? In this case, we want to solve, we want to basically find the maximum product uh, for n, right? So in this case, we want to get the index n, right? We want to calculate that. And then here you can see we define some of our base case, right? We know that we're working from the bottom to the top. So in this case, the first, uh, if it's zero, if it's one, it's gonna be zero. If it's two, right? In this case, if cache is two, right? Cache index two basically means that if n is two, two, we have one, right? There's only one uh, maximum product that we can break it down. So what we do is that we iterate starting from three to n, right? So same logic that we just talked about, basically that for each and every single iteration, we try to uh, exhaust all the options, right? So you can see here, we try with maybe like num minus i, right? Let's say if maybe num is three, three minus one, three minus two, right? And then we try to see, you know, what's the maximum product for num, right? Let's say num is three, what's the maximum product for three, right? In this case, it's gonna be two. And then you can see here for each and every single iteration, we basically check to see is either gonna be cache at num minus one, basically is what we already computed before, or it's gonna be num minus i, which is the current value itself, right? So at the end, we compare, you know, the maximum product is either max product times i, or it's gonna be what we have seen so far, right? What like the cache at num that we have seen so far, right? And at the end, we basically return cache at n. So this will give us a t also a time complexity of linear and space complexity of linear as well because we're using a uh, integer cache array.